Module 7, Sustainability Competence as Learning Objectives Welcome to this video. In this module, you will learn about sustainability competences helping people to improve and develop the knowledge, skills and attitudes to live, work and act in a sustainable manner. This addresses students, and also teachers, who should reflect themselves concerning their own competences to foster students' learning. These teachers' reflections are grounded on existing frameworks and they are related to the Sustain All framework. In the Sustain All framework, ESD competences are included based on the European Sustainability Competences Framework Green Comp. I remember, we have already learned about that Green Comp model in Module 2. In that module the ESD area embracing sustainability values was explained. Right, and in this module, we focus on the other areas. We will pick some competences as examples. Let us start with complexity and sustainability. An example to understand what complexity means. Vicky, which cucumber would you buy? The left one which is wrapped with plastic or the right unwrapped one? I would avoid plastic waste, that is quite clear, isn't it? Or what would you choose? Stop the video for a moment, make a choice and explain your decision. This question can't be answered so easily. I have asked hundreds of students this question for years and more than 90% would have made the same choice as you. First of all, it depends on the season. When you buy a cucumber in winter or in spring, it has to be cultivated in a greenhouse, which is more energy consuming compared to a seasonal cultivation. As a sustainability expert, you should know when vegetables, for example, have their season to reduce the cultivation impact. Secondly, a life cycle impact assessment of goods should consider several perspectives. In this example, one should not only consider the impact of plastic, but also the food waste of unwrapped cucumbers. Researchers from Zonkt Gallen in Switzerland figured out that plastic packaging cuts food waste in half and causes less CO2 in total, when consuming cucumbers from Spain and Switzerland. But, the researchers based their assumption on the CO2 footprint, they did not consider the impact of plastic waste itself, this is just one example of how the simple, obvious, supposed solutions are not necessarily the best ones. That's exciting. I wouldn't have expected that. But what does that have to do with sustainability competence? This cucumber example is related to systems thinking. In the Green Comp model this means to approach a sustainability problem from all sides, to consider time, space and context in order to understand how elements interact within and between systems. Hence knowledge is needed about life cycle thinking and its relevance for sustainable production and consumption. This also includes the main concepts and aspects of complex systems, synthesis, emergence, interconnectedness, feedback loops and cascade effects, and their implications for sustainability. But beneath knowledge one also needs skills. A sustainability competent person can describe sustainability as a holistic concept that includes environmental, economic, social, and cultural issues. This person can also use life cycle thinking to analyze the risks and benefits of human action and can identify in a system those challenges and opportunities that have the greatest potential to trigger change for sustainability. And finally, as a part of systems thinking, attitudes like acknowledging the root causes of unsustainability for which humans are responsible, such as climate change, or having a holistic grasp of connections and interactions between natural events and human actions are relevant. You described now exemplary aspects of competence related to system thinking. But there are more aspects, you mentioned in the beginning. Yes, systems thinking is just an example for more competences. Which are provided within the Green Comp Framework. Here you see a visualization of the Green Comp Framework. Bees represent the competences related to the area acting for sustainability. Flowers represent the competences related to the area envisioning sustainable futures. The beehive represents the competences related to the area embodying sustainability values. Pollen and nectar represent the competences related to the area embracing complexity and sustainability systems thinking, critical thinking, and problem framing. The interdependencies between pollen, bees and flowers ensure the survival of both plants and bees. Wait a moment. I have to think about this model. Pause the video and find a specific example for fostering these interrelated competences in this model. If you want to learn more about the Green Comp Framework, you find the documents in your language in the additional materials in this MOOC.
This sounds quite good and I hope that a lot of pupils would profit from this framework. But I am wondering which competences our teachers would need to improve ESD at our all-day school? That is a legitimate question. The UNESCO has published a ESD for 2030 roadmap. This includes five priority action areas and one of these is building capacities of educators. To effectively support and empower learners, educators must themselves be empowered and furnished with the necessary knowledge, skills, values, and behaviors essential for facilitating this transition. According to Fawn Pook and colleagues, teachers are challenged with finding and implementing appropriate ways to deal with knowledge uncertainty, values and norms, ethical dilemmas, political controversies, concerns for the planet and its inhabitants. We have already heard about Sterling's levels of learning. A teacher needs the competences to develop third-order learning. This is a shift from fostering cognition towards epistemic learning. This includes a paradigmatic shift from a dystopic to a utopic perspective of ESD, like Annaliot claims. Here teachers must be empowered to create learning scenarios not only from a cognitive, but also from a constructive perspective. In this example you see primary school students, who firstly figured out the central concepts of cities and urban development, before inquiring sustainability-related topics like urban water supply or heat resilience at their school's doorstep. The teachers need experience in facilitating inquiry learning, data collection and processing age appropriate with fourth graders. Based on their proper research, the students design solutions for their more sustainable city district, they calculated what funding is required to realize the ideas and they presented their concepts at the city council assembly. Oh, I would love to inquire sustainability issues at my hometown. But surely there is a lot more to learn about the teachers' sustainability competences. Yes, absolutely. We offer a lot of additional information in the accompanying material for this module. To conclude, what we have worked through in this module. We looked at systems thinking, using an example from the ESD action area embracing complexity and provided an overview of the competences in the Green Comp model. We presented the ESD for 2030 toolbox and raised the question of which competences are necessary for a change of perspective for a good future. Thank you.